This is critical to applying the correct amount. To accomplish this, you should tape a test panel to a door or piece of scrap wood. After spraying, we can test for film thickness using a wet film gauge. The wet film gauge is carefully placed into the wet film and removed. Now you can look at the tips of the gauge as they are set at different heights, so the last one that has paint on it will tell you the depth of the material. This exercise will teach the new painter whether or not they are moving at the correct speed for that amount of paint coming out of the gun. Here is a door being sprayed using the correct technique. Most sprayers will try to do the best they can, but without this type of training, will not know what to do first. At the end of the day, the system is easy to clean by merely lifting the siphon rod out of the paint and inserting it into a bucket of clean solvent. Dispense until clean solvent appears. Clean the air cap and tip and set aside. In the spray finishing operation, a sprayer can create good spray habits or bad spray habits. It takes training to make sure good spray habits are formed. So let's review good spray habits. Keep the spray gun parallel to the part. Do not arc the gun. Turn the gun on and off at the beginning and end of each pass. Make sure you time the on and off so that you spray the least amount of material past the part. Paint the edges and difficult areas first. Make sure you miss coat first, then let it tack dry, and then start to spray the additional coats. And finally, make sure you keep the spray nozzle and tip clean. So now that you've learned the proper techniques, practice is the only way to improve at this craft. Pay attention to these spray techniques and you will become a professional. Now I would like to cover some of the accessories available for the Airmix system. First of all, a spray gun cover will help keep the gun clean and reduce maintenance. A hose sleeve is available to help keep the hoses clean. And tip cleaning needles will assist in removal of dirt from the tip. Spray gun filters are installed to prevent tip plugs. Micro screens are available when low flow rates are desired, as in number six tips and smaller. Viscosity cups are used to make sure you are always spraying the same viscosity. Wet film thickness gauges are available to assist in training sprayers to adjust to the right speed. A two-gun manifold is available when two guns are desired. Lubricant T is available for standard paints and lubricant P for polyurethane paints to be poured into the solvent cup. A two- and three-way suction manifold is available for quick color change or for a fast flush to clean the system. Safety is an all-important area to understand when using hazardous materials respirators for protecting the lungs, safety glasses for protecting the eyes, and even spray gun covers to help keep your hands away from the chemicals are available. It is very important to understand that isocyanates can enter the body through the eyes. Therefore, safety glasses or a full face mask respirator must be worn. Grounding is also a very important function to eliminate static electricity. All containers, pumps, and spray guns must be grounded to prevent static discharge. It is only by using air mix properly that you will realize its full benefits. We hope that this video will be instrumental in your achievement of that goal. For further information regarding the proper use of air mix, contact Excel to find your local representative for service, support, and training. Thanks for visiting with us today.